Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Introducing Rate Shield Approval. If you're in the market to buy a home, Rate Shield Approval locks up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. It's a real game changer. Learn more and get started at rocketmortgage.com slash Android. Hello and welcome to All About Android, episode 379, recorded on Tuesday, July 24th, 2018, where your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I am Ron Richards. And I am Florence Ion. And because somebody wrote in to say, hey, you guys always talk and then you invite the guest in and it's really awkward, I'm going to invite the guest in right now and then we're going to talk about our awesome okay. week. Aunt Pruitt returning Hello, to the Aunt. show. It's been long overdue, techrepublic.com and so many other things. How you doing, Aunt? I am unbelievable as always. What about you? <laughs> doing okay. We're hyped up on sugar. We had some thins. You'll have to stay tuned to the end of the episode to find what Oreos we ate this and week. And what kind of kombucha I drank them with. And possibly what the next version of Android might actually stand sure, for. Because yeah. we might have a clue at we the might. end of this show. Foreshadowing. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, dun, dun, dun. But, and so you've been spending a lot of time lately, not necessarily specifically in the Android world, but you've been doing a lot of stuff with drone photography. Tell us a little bit about that. Drone photography and smartphone photography, DS, DSLR photography, just snapping photos and just trying to create some awesome and thought-provoking com compositions as best I can. And I have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, and you get to write about it and all oh, yeah. that kind of stuff. It's, it's nice when you can take the thing that you love and then, you know, become a, like an authority on that and, you know, and somebody's willing to kind of give you the platform to do that. You mean like us? Uh, well, oh, yeah. I, I, I suppose so. <laughs> what, so explain hey, this photo. What are we looking at right here? I know that picture. Yeah, what That's are we looking downtown at? downtown San Francisco. Oh, okay. You Carl the nice. Fog rolling in, about to engulf everybody. Yeah, there's some, <laughs> there's some good dynamic range going on in this picture. And that was actually shot with a, I think it was a Nexus 6. What? Ah, okay. Are you serious? I it's liked serious. the photos from the Nexus 6. I may be in what? the minority on serious? that. Yes, I did. With the HDR it's Plus, serious. it was slow, but I got really great pictures out of it. Nexus 6 and then those two um, lights on the upper left, that's with the Pixel. Oh, yeah, um, I believe that. Uh -huh. I believe that. Look at that detail. Yeah. I, I just I just have a lot of fun with it, and I try to um, share what I learn and my experiences with people that read my work and watch my videos and all that good stuff. It's, it's pretty fun, and I'm pretty fortunate to be able to do it. Right on. I mean, the best camera you have is the one that you have on you. <laughs> Isn't that you the truth? You know it. You know it. <laughs> I, I think I've mentioned on the show before, but a few years back, probably three or four years ago, I bought for my wife for Christmas this like mirror DSLR uh, camera. You know, she had mentioned like, I really want a really nice camera so that when we do things with the kids, we can yeah, you know get photos, whatever. Sure. And it's just sat, you know, on the on the, the you know stand. Who has the time? Never gets used because. Yeah, like you said, the, the best camera you have is the one you have on you, and you have to really make a concerted <laughs> effort yeah. to like take that DSLR and most of them out. Are water resistant now. Most of the DSLRs are no the smartphones. Oh, the smart. Well, yeah, yeah that's true. And right. their GPS less trackers and their mirrors. Yeah, Bleak saying, "Put it near the door and force yourself to take it." That doesn't make it any less cumbersome when you've got it out. We're charging like, a battery just, for another product. No, there's no excuse. You know, no I'm, excuse. <laughs> all right, show us why. Bag of tricks. Bag of tricks. That's oh, all? Yeah, that's, the, that's the, the bag that everybody raves about on social media that, like, carries all the stuff. everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. Everywhere okay. I go. You know, if I'm going to the, to the grocery store, if I'm going to the ABC store to pick up some whiskey, I have my bag in there. I even have my drone with me most of the time. And then you see all something together. really cool and you want to take a picture of it really quick. How fast can you get to the, the camera in the bag, have it set up and take the picture that you needed. Like, are you as fast with that as I would be like reaching in my pocket for the smartphone camera? Fortunately, with that particular bag, it's really fast because it's a magnetic clip and I just pull it open uh, and, okay. and it's right there within a, a second or two. That was a fantastic That's shot right cool. there. Yeah, yeah what was, was that? Thank you. 
Yeah. That's with the that's, drone that, there. Uh, that's a great I was going to say, Flo, that's the, that's the freeway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, planet Earth. And that's amazing. That, that, I mean, that the, the drone photography stuff is, I have a couple of friends who are into that stuff, and you just get some amazing perspectives yeah. that you never really see, you know, like to see it from that angle. So cool. Totally. I mean, you know, back not very long ago, you needed like a complex crane or a very expensive yeah. airplane to hang out of or in order to do any of this stuff. Remember when they used to do helicopter right. yeah. views yeah. for movies? And now everybody can just like fly a little drone around and, and take these great shots and great tracking shots that are, just look mm -hmm. cinematic and Hollywood and yeah it's cool. yeah well well so speaking of bags can I show off my bag oh yeah what's yes. in what's in your bag well because I, I, I don't everyone know everyone knows but like um a few months ago I got the wonderful bag the one plus bag yes yeah that was yeah. a while ago yeah it's a good plus. bag so that's pretty pretty cool right there's the one plus logo it's actually a great bag and it's got a nice little slot for your laptop I don't know if I can how quickly I can get a camera out of this thing, but it's a pretty good bag. But I always felt kind of weird because I was had a OnePlus bag and I didn't have a OnePlus phone. And uh, those of you who were watching last week know that I've been using the uh, uh, Moto X2 because my Google Pixel died. Uh, but sure enough, today in the in the mail, uh, I got this. I got this curious box. <laughs> oh that, wow! That might, wow, that might Jason. look familiar <laughs> to some people. You wonder what ha why that happened. <laughs> but sure enough, what's in it? Oh, oh, oh nice! Wow. Wow. Oh, I love it. You saved on bubble wrap. The, yep. the, bes the bespoke uh, box gave me, uh, <laughs> as it says, the, the speed you need. It is a <laughs> one plus six. Thanks to the fine folks at OnePlus, as well as my all about Android sister, Florence. Thank you. So I'm going to be giving the OnePlus 6 a little bit of a, a test yes. drive for a little while. Now, nice. the irony like is, it. is that literally the day after my Google Pixel died, I finally got in the mail my Google Pixel case. For being, a local, for being a local guide. And uh, so I don't have, I could use my map of Queens, New York what? on a dead Google oh. Pixel. So. Oh, cool. That's super cool. I want a local uh, guide case. I, I might try I might try to resuscitate the Pixel just to use that. I don't know if it will fit on the Pixel too. We'll see. I don't know. Or, but, just, um, or just carry around the Pixel, maybe turn it into a necklace with the case on it. Yeah, flavor flavor. Hey, if, if the dang thing will stop rebooting, I could use it as a Wi-Fi device or something. I don't know. Yeah. But... I'm super excited to be using the OnePlus 6. I, I haven't set it up yet. I'm going to set it up after the show. Um, I'm actually going on vacation tomorrow uh, for a few days. I'm going to be in Pittsburgh at the annual Pinburg pinball tournament, and I'm going to take Ooh. tons of pictures. I'm going to give this a test run on the battery life. We'll see how it goes. But, Jason, yeah. I, I feel like I can't get rid of the bespoke box, and I don't have a lot of room in my apartment, but I'm going to save it for when I need to send you something back <laughs> because I don't I don't want this to get thrown out in New York City. I was going to uh, say, just send it back if you need to. Yeah, I, might, I might just send it back empty. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not trying to throw shade on OnePlus, but that box looks exactly like the Nexus 6, Nexus 6 box from a couple of years ago. Does so it not? The white box or the bespoke box? Yeah, yeah, no, the yeah white box. that box right there. Look very looks like the Nexus yeah. 6. I think on purpose, I think, and also the Nexus 6 box kind of looks like an iPhone box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the, the white, thick cardboard, minimal packaging, Apple did set that design aesthetic. Box aesthetic. innovation has slowed, maybe, yeah. a little bit. So, um, no, we but need I'm innovation in boxes. <laughs> yeah, we do need innovation in boxes, but I've never used the OnePlus as a daily driver before. So this will I'm be so excited awesome. for you. I'm so excited yeah. for your experience. Yeah. I can't wait to hear what you think. And I'm also <laughs> very curious to hear what you think about the pictures coming from a Pixel. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're going to like that phone, I think. You'll you'll enjoy it. Uh, good. I'm happy it got to you, and we can make sure that that box becomes a running uh, character in the show <laughs> one way or another <laughs> what, over what time. We're shipping it next. <laughs> I don't know. An Stay egg. tuned to find out. Uh, real quick before we get to the news, just a reminder. We do this always at the end of the show. I thought I'd do it at the beginning, you know, just switch things up. If you haven't subscribed, you should do it. Twit.tv slash AAA. You can find us in iTunes and all the other places. We say it at the end. Now I'm going to say it just real quick at the beginning before I throw to Victor for the news. <laughs> I know for a fact that since All About Android started, we've reported more news on Android news. That's true. Not less. Not less. No. <laughs> well, that's true. That's, that is fact. Let's be honest. Yes. Uh, like this news, did you... And by the way, I am still using the, uh, the Chrome tab. 
So if I get frustrated, yes. throw it across the room. You'll you'll understand wow. why right. I'm trying to uh, get to the note that I have embedded, but I cannot. I, you I have the that, note. Man. If you'd like, <laughs> you'd like to peep on over my uh, screen. Oh wait a minute! I got it. I have my little sliver of, of detail here. The EU. You probably already know about the this. European we talked about it Union. Y- y- last week uh, because the actual fine had not happened yet. Well, now we know the EU issued a record-breaking 4.3 billion euros fine to Google. And that's a penalty for what we talked about a little bit last week, the anti-competitive behavior on the part of the Android OS and Google's management of that. Quick summary of what that means or or what those charges were. Google forces pre-install of Chrome and Search app as a condition of carrying the Play Store on the device. That was one of the charges. Google paid for Search app exclusivity to keep it shielded from competition. This is what the EU says. And Google prevented manufacturers from selling devices with non-Google versions of Android, which is essentially... uh, as how all of this plays is if you're a device manufacturer and you're putting out a device that has the GMS, all of Google's uh, apps and services embedded on it, you can't then also sell a version or a device that runs the non Google uh, version of Android. You have to, all of your devices have to be that. So it kind of locks you in if you agree to that. Uh, So Google has to pay this fine. They have 90 days to change their conduct or face further penalties. And of course, Google's going to appeal. Sundar Pichai put out a blog post. uh, It basically summarizes that Android actually does provide choice. The Post stressed that 24,000 devices at all price points are available on Android now, uh, but can all run the same applications because of the rules that Google has specified here. They're talking about keeping everything conformed to a specific set of rules so that everything interoperates and works together and you don't have a convoluted uh, ecosystem. Also says that these devices include, quote, as many as 40 apps from multiple developers with the ability to disable and delete apps and choose others. So even though Chrome might ship on a device, that doesn't stop someone from uh, installing their own or even from the manufacturer from including their own on there as another option, is, as is the case with Samsung. Um, I, I realize I'm throwing this at you, Victor. Is Pichai possibly, is Sundar Pichai possibly standing by uh, to answer one of our, our, uh, our calls here? I don't, uh, he, he might not be. Oh, he's offline. He's too busy. That's okay. He's too busy dealing. He's, yeah, he, he, it's, we, it's okay. We lost him on Skype. <clears throat> All right. Well, so he dropped off on Skype, but before he went, he yelled out very quickly. He said, we are concerned that today's decision will upset the careful balance that we have struck with Android and that it sends a troubling signal in favor of proprietary systems over open platforms, which I think is an interesting statement because I think the EU would use this statement uh, to back their side of the argument, right? Because they, they think that Google is being a little bit more proprietary, I think, in that sense and not allowing others to compete on the same playing field. So that's kind of a summary of where we're at as a result of all this. And uh, it happened. And hey, who knows? In 90 days, if Google doesn't make changes, sure that they will. But if they don't make changes, this story could continue. Uh, what do we think about it? Should we throw to you, Flo? I have... <laughs> A lot to say on this matter. I said a lot. Here. I said a lot last week. Here. I said a lot Here. last week over several podcasts. But basically, I just feel like everybody talking about how much choice has been created. They're not thinking about the fact that all of these phones have Google services in common, and that the overall goal of the EU is to keep the Google services from propagating and becoming, you know, a monopoly basically. Mm -hmm. A monopoly of Google services everywhere. So it doesn't matter if you're using a Motorola phone, if you're using an LG phone, if you're using a Pixel phone or a Samsung phone, you are still tapping into those Google services. Like those are the things that, that's the one route that you have to go. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's actually a little worse than iOS because it says it's open, but in reality, it's kind of like keeping you within the boundaries of this one particular service ecosystem. If you choose to agree to Google's requirements, stringent requirements yeah. in, in allowing those because services to be does, there. So are you saying that you, I mean, 
do you side with or do you kind of understand the EU's I do. thinking on this? I do. Because okay. why does a Samsung phone have to have two browsers on it? The only reason it has two browsers is because Google requires that the Chrome browser not, is on there, but Samsung wants its browser that it puts its own development work into to be prominent on the phone. But then in the end, it's the consumer that loses out on it because now I've got like two browsers that I have, one of them I can't delete. I have to deal with these two browsers. But it's also like that insistence of, this is the Google path. Like, look, you're using a phone in the Google bubble, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Uh, so, Ant, wh where do you stand on this? Do you, do you feel like having two browsers on a device is choice or is bad for the consumer uh, be because they're kind of stuck with something that they don't want? I don't like the idea of Google forcing a browser on you um, especially when there are other options out there uh, that you guys have even reviewed in the past. But I do like the fact that Google is saying, you know what, we're trying to make things a little more uniform across whatever mobile device that you're using, especially when we heard for about, I don't know, almost 10 years that F word when it come to Android and everything was different. And I, I like that they're trying to unify everything. <laughs> See, you knew it. I didn't I, have to say it. <laughs> Some, actually, I, I feel like fr the fragmentation as a word and as a discussion point has really kind of fallen off the map a lot in, in the it last did. couple of years, almost to the point to where I felt the need to say that so someone didn't think it was the other F word. Because it's coming back around. Because uh, I think that's why Google's a little, I mean, not scared. I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, a little, why it's kind of leaning in the direction of like, hey, we're creating choice. Please don't rock this boat. We're working so hard to try and like right. reel all of this back in. And if we have to comply with some new standards, that's just going to like change everything we've been working on. Yeah. So no, that's what I kind of I feel is the, is the real note of that. You know, we've created more choice. Please side with us. I it's, can't quite wrap my head around the we created more choice talk. What, what do they mean by that? What, do, what does they, Google uh, mean by they, that? They, they obviously created more choice by, by giving an alternative to Apple. Right, like if you if you don't want to spend if you don't want to or can't spend the money on an I, iOS device, what other choice did you have? A feature phone? Well, uh, right? maybe so, it would have been a feature phone if Android weren't on every phone and there were other operating systems. Well, able I, but, but, to, yeah, but this is this is a weird this is a weird kind of existential crisis loop you get in because <laughs> when the smart when the smartphone market emerged, right? They were we already had Windows Windows phones, which we all knew were garbage iOS was a revelation because it showed what a smartphone could do. And then Google responded with Android to provide competition and choice in the marketplace. You know, there are other there are other operating systems that have tried to launch and never got traction. So I think there are, you know, admittedly I'm being pro Google in this argument. But they absolutely did provide choice. There was there there for for a year, however long it was until Android came out, there was one choice. It was Apple. And now and, okay. and Google is give, given a second one. So I don't okay. know. I, 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 I think I think that they did give choice, but I also think that two browsers on a phone is not the end of the world at all. No, I think it's, I've got it's not, I think it's I've got not about the browsers on the phone. Yeah. It's still like right. Google created choice, but Google created choice within its bubble. It's like, here's choice, but the only real choice that you have is that the Google service is behind all of this and that the Google branding is what's behind but, all of okay, this. Okay, so then take a yeah, step back whole... one a little bit. And what about the fact that Google actually offers two different types of Android? Google offers- Now it does. Sure, now it does and has for quite a while. Google offers a version of Android that has its services looped through that you agree to, that you say, if I, I actually want your valuable services and your apps on my phone because people want those, therefore I agree to this. Or you agree to not do that and you can do a version of Android that includes anything that you actually want. I mean, and the, and then, of course, the problem ends up being that everybody wants access to the Play Store that has the kind of the richest app ecosystem that Android can yeah. provide. Um, but Google I mean, service. you do have choice, right? You do have some choices there, is, but that's I'm not enough seen. choice, according to the EU. Is that right? I Wait. remember seeing in a chat room recently, someone talked about... Uh, maybe like a grandmother or somebody getting a new phone and they didn't want to set up a Gmail account. They just wanted a phone and wanted to be able to fire up the browser and all of that. And I think that's the, another big problem with it is just forcing you to sort of sign up for those services or else you're just getting somewhat of a dummy phone. Mm. We also have to look at the fact that I just 
don't think the EU wants Google to get as big in Europe as it has over here. Like it's, this is totally just a matter of regulating a company that's as big as Google and has, has its hand in as many pots as it does. And mm -hmm. I think the idea is to keep it asunder kind of the same way it did with Microsoft in the nineties. And I know that's like the big thing yeah. everybody keeps relating it to, but it, you know, I still think it holds some credence and I think we have to look at that history as well to kind of know how the EU operates compared to America. It there Sounds are Sounds like oranges to oranges to me. Did the changes that were made with Microsoft back then, like did they amount to what the EU is hoping will happen in, in you know, in pushing Google in this so. direction? I mean there's still I around. absolutely think so. Yeah. <laughs> still around. Me, yeah. I mean, yeah, I absolutely think so because they they forced Microsoft to provide alternate browser options in Windows, and they complied. And so now there's a window, there's an EU version of Windows that ships with Edge or IE or whatever, but or doesn't ship with the browser. I forget what the thing was, but Microsoft absolutely complied. And whether or not it, I don't like to Flo's point, they're still around, they're surviving, they're figuring out how mm -hmm. to work around these 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 um, these guidelines, which I think is what Google's going to have to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'll be fine. And then, yeah. and then, do those changes end up, uh, you know, filtering into other markets and not just EU? EU is obviously an, a very large market, but I mean, taking the Microsoft example, like I think we discussed this a little bit last week. Here in the U.S., when you install a copy of Windows, I haven't done it in a long time. But the last time I did it, I didn't get that browser selection window. It was something that appears, I think, in the e in the European market mm -hmm. and not in the U.S. market. So there is such a thing as serving different versions of these things to different markets. Uh, I'd just be curious to see if Google goes the single approach of, well, we're doing it over here. Maybe we change things foundationally to service all markets equally, or do they end up fragmenting, you know, so that the EU gets one version or the European Union, uh, Europe gets one version of Android and then the rest of the world gets I would gets think another. so. I would think that they would end up fragmenting it further, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I mean, how are yeah. you, if you're going to have this much choice, it's going to become fragmented anyway, because it's so big. It just feels like this is such a big beast that it's trying to be reined in right now. And it's, it's getting huge. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we can all talk about, ah, oh, Google's got to pay so much money, $5 billion. It's so much money. <laughs> ah, they're going to have to do it's all this. Like, it's, Whatever. It's just, yeah. it's just a giant company. They're going to be fine. So five, five billion, <laughs> five billion dollars, you know, translated to, to dollars would be a lot for most companies. Earnings, their earnings report was off the charts, which basically shielded the effects of the fine entirely. And in the end, they still had an amazing quarter. If you take out you know, that the hit to revenue as a result of this. Investors aren't concerned. He shrugged off the impact of <laughs> EU fine, according to an Android police headline. So, well put. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so there we have it. I'm sh Obviously, the story is not over. We're going to hear more about this as it goes along and as Google sure. you know, seeks to comply with it 90 days. This is going to be, be our EU it. case of this generation. <laughs> yeah. But I mean that in all seriousness, because I feel like this could change. I mean, this could change some things. Yeah. If they yeah, have really to could. change the underlying code of Android to... We'll certainly this. see, or how they uh, how they strike those deals and uh, what what exclusivity actually means, you know, mm -hmm. for Google yep. services. Yeah. All right. What's next? Uh, well, I kind of saw some of this popping up on social media yesterday, but I didn't look into it. Uh, and I guess I'm kind of bummed that I didn't because now it's missing. So yesterday there was a material design video produced in collab with Google. It appeared on Vimeo, uh, and it was taken down immediately thereafter. So what it did is it showed the evolution of material design since the very beginning, the dawn of the material. The age of Aquarius. Um, the, yes, the age of material. Age of material. So it showed the direction of Google's apps with designs. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry, that got me. Sorry. That was great. <laughs> um, so the video showed off a uh, direction of Google's apps with designs that weren't seen in the apps themselves. Uh, and then friend of the show, Liam Spradlin, who's now a Googler, tweeted about the video, which kind of created a little more buzz around it because, ah, design person from Google tweeting. Uh, but then Liam added, the interfaces seen in the video shouldn't be considered final plan stage, final plan designs. Sit tight. And this is kind of along the lines of when we got the new Material 2 or, you know, whatever it was called at Google I.O., we got prototype designs from several companies just to show kind of what Material would look like in those evolutions. So I kind of I kind of like this little approach. It's very much a... Uh, 
it's very much a little tease of what's to come. And we see it kind of coming in through the app updates that we're getting from the Android apps. It's, it's, funny you say, it's funny you say that because just recently I've noticed these little subtle updates that are happening mm -hmm. here and there and, and the font is changing to whatever the, the new font or the material font, is, right? That The, the new like Gmail Sans, font. I believe it is. Yeah. yeah, whatever it is. So assist. I'm seeing it in Assistant. I'm seeing it in like Google Now or whatever that whole thing is. You're seeing it emerge a little bit here and there. And I got to admit, I like the direction it's going and I like it a lot and it feels material evolved, you know, and it, it definitely seems like a good direction. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are. Definitely seems cleaner. It seems cleaner. It's a lot of white space. And uh, actually, we have an emailer later in the show uh, who has complaints about this, like this white space trend. Uh, a lot of people have complaints about white space for one re reason or another, but there are there are serious complaints about about it from like an accessibility standpoint as well. But that's certainly the direction that Google's going. Every time they, they release something new, there's a lot more white. There's a little bit extra space and, and uh, margins around things. Some would see that as wasted space, but it makes it look a lot cleaner to my eyes. Sure. Yeah. While I doing this, I wish they would still figure out a way to give me the swipe away option back from the cards on the today screen. Yes. Oh yeah, I know, right? I mean, it, that's, weird I that know I'm not the only person that's complained about it. No, <laughs> you have to attach the, uh, tap the overflow button and then hide this or whatever in order to get it. Yeah, to that's, disappear, that's right? yeah, yeah. It's so weird. It's so weird because that was never how uh, the the feed worked when it was Google Now. Strange that they decided to do that. Ron, you got the next one. Strange. Yes. Strange so, 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 so a lot of times you release a product and it's really cool, and then the next version is really cool, then the next version is really cool. <laughs> but in some spaces, six times the charm. But I think the product was already pretty cool, but it's going to get even cooler. Gorilla Glass 6 is going to be the best Gorilla Glass yet, everybody. Yeah. So um, <laughs> Corning announced this last week saying that the first device is to ship with Gorilla Glass 6 in the second part of this year, which is just around the corner, folks. This year is almost over. Oh, my goodness. Um, I can't believe so it. Mm, we're into the wow. second half of the year. We should start seeing Gorilla Glass 6. It uses a new material that is, quote, chemically strengthened to higher levels of compression and is designed for phones that use the glass on 85% of the design, i.e., those with the 18 to 9 or 19 to 9 aspect ratio. And in tests, it survived 15 drops from one meter onto rough surfaces two times times better than Gorilla Glass 5. And I got to tell you, we are getting closer and closer to a all glass phone. Thanks to the <laughs> people at Corning and Gorilla Glass. And I am not paid by Corning to, to, to hype Gorilla Glass. I'm just saying that my dream of a bezel-less phone that is all glass is going to be a reality because of Gorilla Glass 9. There, I said it. Version 9 will do it. I, I uh, feel like every right time first. there's a new Gorilla Glass, it's like your phone is going to be practically you know, scratch proof and it never seems to happen. So <laughs> I hope that they're right. I hope that they're right. They're way more slippery. That's I'm sure. pretty yeah. sure case sales are still going to yeah. climb each and every year. They're not going to decline. Yeah. Well, yeah, because now you can get cases with like Tetris games on them. You can play. <laughs> Yes. Like physical Tetris games? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Like black and white Tetris games. It's okay. like, wow. it's crazy what kind of cases you can get. Why wouldn't I cover the phone mm. with a piece of personality? Uh, I'd put Tetris on my phone. Sure, why not? Yeah. I've enjoyed the last three or four devices that I've had, but every single one of them has just been too slippery. Yeah. And it just gets worse with each iteration. And I have no problem slapping a cover on there. And shout out to you, Gorilla Glass, for, for trying to make it better and stronger. But if that phone is slippery, it's, that glass is not going to mean a hill of beans to me. <laughs> yeah, we need it to be smooth and tacky at the same time, which that doesn't make any sense at all. We are. I know we're 20 years late, but the, the discovery of transparent aluminum is just around the corner, and that will solve everything. <laughs> oh, Ron, you're awesome. You're so you're Wait, so was there really positive. transparent aluminum? Oh, Flo. Oh. Someday. It's, Flo, rent uh, your homework assignment. Go watch Star Trek IV. Okay. The Voyage Home. So, <laughs> and actually, to be honest, Flo and anyone else in the audience, if you have not seen Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, whether you're a Star Trek fan or not, watch it because it is one of the best Star Trek movies and it is a hilarious glimpse at 1987 San Francisco. <laughs> That's right. It's been oh, a long no, time since I watched that one. So, Flo, I think you would enjoy it. The, okay. It was all shot on location. Okay. So, all right. <laughs> That's your homework. We'll check right. in on yep. it next yep. week. We'll, check it we'll next test week. you mm -hmm. on a right. single fact from within the movie. 
I got it. Pop quiz <laughs> Pull it next out. week. So you might have to watch two or three times. Just saying. <laughs> uh, we got a voicemail from Willie. Yay, female. A voicemail from Willie. I uploaded it on SoundCloud, so you'll find the link there, Victor, about Amazon Prime and for phones. Probably. I do have it. I swear. I show last week, I heard about Ron's uh, unfortunate um, accident with his phone, and so he had to go back to using another device. I wanted to call in with this. I don't know if y'all knew about this, but Amazon Prime has this deal where on some of the Amazon Prime phones, you can get them in payment plans, and it doesn't require applying for credit or anything like that. It's just as a Prime member benefit, you get to get these phones that are payable over time. Um, I saw one of the Moto X4s, I think, was available like that. There was a LG G6 that you could do that with. And so just wanted to throw that out there. Maybe that's an option for Ron and for some of the listeners who are looking for a new device but don't want to break the bank. Hope this helps and love the show. Keep up the good work. Take care. I didn't realize Prime had this. So it's uh, either. No, either. there's a ton of blue phones in there the blu uh brand blue. so Please they definitely have yeah they definitely have uh deals with certain uh they also manufacturers. Have an Honor 6X. huawei are, are zte blue, are blue phones the ones that send your data to china yes Oh, okay. they did. Don't do that, folks. I think, Don't do that. I think they're one of them. They're just not, <laughs> listen, they're not listen. very reliable. Like, yeah. listen, send your data to China once, my bad. Send your data to China twice, all of our bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. Yeah. The, the, let's see, the Blackberry Leap Factory. Am I reading that? What? Right? I don't know. Black what? by BlackBerry, fifty-five dollars. Okay, that's that's obviously weird. There's a lot of strange phones in here, I will say, uh, but I didn't know that Amazon had this. And strange and as far phones. as I can understand, if you're a Prime uh, Prime member, no finance oh, charge. No, what's that? A Sony phone. A Sony. Yeah, I take an hey, Xperia. This is Sony. Uh, Moto G. There's a couple of uh, older Moto Fourth G devices gen. in there. But no finance charges, no interest, no hidden fees, no credit check application required. It's straight up. It's a monthly payment plan. Zenfone 3 Max. Instead of paying up front, you just pay monthly and you pay less that way. And... Uh, so you know, do your someti research. Sometimes when you're when <laughs> when you have a device break and maybe maybe you want yeah. an interim phone, you're waiting for something. Maybe it makes sense to do something like this instead of paying. Do your I, I don't know. I'm sure it's helpful. To Type somebody. in the name of the phone and security breach. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a good idea. Name of the phone yeah. and data privacy. That's a good idea. That's just, a good idea. Just yeah, to be safe. Fair. Yeah. So, anyways, thanks for sending that in, Willie. Yeah, uh, I did not know. realize that that existed. Consumery things do. we don't always we don't always <laughs> get a hang of. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean. we don't know about them until we do. And uh, it turns out Prime, <laughs> Amazon Prime, has a lot of perks, and uh, so many that you they kind of get lost, right? You you kind of don't even know. Yeah, they're they just there keep adding them in. Uh, let's take a break and thank the sponsor of this episode, and then we'll get to some hardware stuff. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. Buy Quicken Loans. Uh, we're going to talk about buying a home for just a few minutes here. Uh, you may already have heard about the rising interest rates. It's happening. There's a lot of unpredictability uh, when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a lot of anxiety with folks. They don't know what their options are. They don't know if they should move now or wait or all that kind of stuff. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about that. They're calling it the power buying process. And this is how it works. Quicken Loans it's going to verify your income, your assets, and your credit in less than 24 hours. So super quick verification process to give you that verified approval. And this actually gives you the strength of a cash buyer. Once you're verified, you qualify for their all-new exclusive rate shield approval. First, they'll lock up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. So that rate is locked in there. Even if the rates change over time, you've got up to 90 days for that rate to stay in place. And then here's the best part. If the rates go up, your rates will stay the same. But if the rates go down, your rate also drops. So no matter what, you're going to win. Uh, it's kind of thinking that you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. And then you can move, like I said, like a cash buyer. It gives you the strength of a cash buyer when you find something that you want to move on. So get started. 
Go to rocketmortgage.com slash Android. Rate Shield approval is only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to uh, public data records. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org, number 3030. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Android. And we thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support of All About Android. And now it's time to talk some hardware. We saw some Moto G phones on that Amazon uh, Prime list, but not the Moto G6 because this is the new one. This right? one is worth buying, and this one oh. is on Project Fi. Oh. So if you've seen the Moto X4, then this phone will look very familiar to you. It is the Moto G6. Oop. Look, I tried to make a little like nice, scene. nice uh, uh, drop. Also, because like this it. thing is super fingerprinty, as yeah. you will see immediately, it just picks up your fingerprints. So we went through the specs of this really quickly uh, the last time couple, we showed it off. A couple weeks ago, but we've got a. Let me hold. Actually, hold on one second. Whoop. Let me make sure. Do, do, do. Let me. Okay, there we go. We're good. We're good. <laughs> so this is the Moto G6. Um, it's got a 5.7. Here I go trying to like make this work, and it's not. So it's got a 5.7 inch um, 1080p IPS display. I just unlocked it with my fingerprint. I put an annoying Animal Crossing uh, wallpaper on the back <laughs> because I wanted to see how it handled uh, moving wallpaper. So I just downloaded this because I was, yeah. I just wanted to see how it would handle all that. It's beautiful wallpaper. Well, I will tell you that the Qualcomm Snapdragon 427 processor and three gigs of RAM, while it's nice for, you know, things like watching TV and posting to Twitter, it is very slow when it comes to things like Snapchat and even Animal Crossing, uh, the actual game you can tell is just kind of... Chug, it's a chug, lot, chug. it's a lot, mm -hmm. um, it jumps a lot, like the mm. animations and the graphics jump a lot and you can yeah. tell it's not as smooth as being on a pixel, but you know. So inside this thing, there's 32 gigs of storage. There's a micro SD slot up here on the top. Uh, like I said, it's Project Fi compatible. It's got USB-C on the bottom and of course, headphone jack. Sweet. So, nice. Which is, which is nice. great. Nice I don't bonus. have to worry about all that. And of course, the fingerprint is on the front. I, I mean, it's fine. It's fast, as you can see. It works just fine. But I really like the implementation that Moto had on their Z3 phone. Yeah, on the side. Right here. Well, I what's interesting like to me is the so the fingerprint sensor is on the bottom, but it's the same like sliver size as you would get on the yeah, side of the phone. Exactly. You know, it, it, they didn't make it any so bigger. So when I scanned in my thumb, I was just scanning it like this. Yeah, because you never so know where your thumb's going to hit. I didn't on the really thing and, yeah. need to do that. Uh, the screen's actually really nice. I actually had a really nice little gradient uh, wallpaper on here earlier, and it it looks super nice. And video looks really good on this, and apps look really good, and the colors are vivid. And if you swipe over, you'll get that Google feed. And if you swipe over to the end, you won't get anything because it's just like a pixel launcher. It only has as many home screens as you want. Uh, when you install it, it is pretty bare bones as well. So you're not going to get, or when you set it up, you're not going to get all of that bloatware. Also on the back, there is dual rear facing cameras. So we've got 12 megapixels and five megapixels. They both shoot at F point. F1.8 aperture, um, also an eight megapixel front facing camera, which the camera is like fine. I brought a couple portrait shots for show and tell just to kind of show. Um, but before we go into those, sorry, Victor, before we go into those, let me actually show you the camera interface. So hello, yeah, you're upside looks, down. Okay. Looks familiar. <laughs> Yes, so we've got Google Lens button right here if you need it. Uh, we've got the portrait mode button right here if you need it. Uh, this is just regular photo. And then when you swipe over here, my God, all these tool tips, I get it. You're onboarding me. Um, <laughs> and then over here we have photo modes like portrait, text scanner, spot color so that you can take a picture with like a, a certain color, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in there. Panorama, face filters, which are just like, fun little, as you can see, I haven't tried them on yet, but I know that these have been on a couple of other Moto phones. So they're well, not yeah, totally and you, new. And you need to have a friend in order to use them. Yeah. You can't do them in selfie mode, which I so thought was I a missed opportunity. So I guess it's for millennials. Yeah. 
Yes. That makes sense. Uh, but other than that, I mean, the interface well, is friends. pretty, it's just, it's pretty bare bones. The camera is kind of slow. Okay. I will say you have to hold the camera still to take a still photo. So Victor, if you wouldn't mind rolling through those portrait photos, just so I can, just so you can check. So this is just some portrait photos in my house of birds oh. and um, <laughs> candle wax and some mushrooms. <laughs> so I it's not too bad, but you can tell like, look how kind of the white, the white looks sort of faded. So mm. the thing about Motorola phones, I've been using, I've been testing these for years and there's something about Mo the Motorola camera on their sort of lower end and mid range phones. Like they all have this sort of faded out wispiness about them mm -hmm. that it just doesn't feel alive. It just doesn't feel alive. It feels dead. Oh, like that. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> Moto G6, 250. Not too bad. Half the price of the Moto X4, which has a slightly faster processor, is also on Project Fi. But you know, if you've only got 250 bucks and you just need a phone. I uh, I also use this a lot with IoT, some of my smart home apps. I used this to set up some lights yesterday. Everything went swimmingly. So if you want to use it for home control, you can. Nice. It's got the fast charge or yep. sorry, they call it turbo. Yes, 3000 milliamp turbo power. battery. And uh, since okay. it's turbo power, that means it's proprietary. So it only works with the cord that comes in the box to get that speed. Right, to get yeah. up to that speed Same. for sure. Uh, 3000 milliamps with this, with the kind of lesser, uh, the Snapdragon, what was it again? 427. It 427. Yeah. So it's probably going to give you a better battery, you know, life. Um, those those combined, you know, will we'll couple up and give you a little bit of extra battery life because it's not a processor that's going insane on no on but for a 250 dollar phone it feels a lot more premium than any of like the yeah. previous moto phones totally. that would the design cost is much. really nice I like and it. yeah the design is just an x4 it's just a moto x4 and it makes perfect sense to just use that factory line and pump out you know cheaper phones and yep. make people feel make people feel good even though maybe they can't spend as much they don't have that ability yeah. Everything you just said sounds like a $200 phone. So, I mean, it it's, sounds legit. Yeah. I mean, it does, all, it does. I can do Snapchat on it. It's super slow. Snapchat hasn't been known to be very. It's not. <laughs> but I use it as a benchmark because it's so, it uses up so much memory. Yeah, totally. That if, and if Instagram. If the phone runs Snapchat really well, then that's saying something about And Instagram. About the phone. Yeah. Because Instagram is a very heady app as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it really, I, I mean, I just, what would a millennial do? W, W, M. You know, <laughs> I, I do Slack and email. Like any phone can do that. It's fine. Slack, email, and Twitter, any can do that. It's fine. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe we, w, WMDs is, yeah, this is going yeah, in a different direction. That I, that, yeah. yeah, maybe we don't like that very much. <laughs> All right, moving on. Thank you for showing that off, uh, Moto G6. So you think for the, for the price, a pretty pretty good affordable option. Absolutely. I mean, the fingerprinting thing is going to be annoying, and I don't know how you're going to find a case for it. So, except from where they sell it. Yeah, Motorola probably has super. a case or something. Yeah, I know. But like, what if you want a pink one with like rabbit ears? You know. Yeah, I know. Did Did you get to play around with video? Uh, no, not beyond not beyond like third party apps, actually. Okay. Which perhaps says a little bit about my video usage. <laughs> yeah, I don't take that much video shots, but I, I know that you do, uh, Ant. You oh, yeah. do a lot with video <laughs> on smartphones. Yes, he puts them on drones. <laughs> 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 and but. they fly above the clouds like a Khaleesi on her dragon. That's true. I allegedly do that. <laughs> allegedly. Whoa. All right. Um, well, so not allegedly, but our friends over at Xiaomi announced a couple more Android One devices that might be worth looking at. So the Xiaomi Mi A2 was announced, and this is a six inch, 18, 18 to nine aspect ratio, 1080p LCD display uh, device running Snapdragon 660. And it's got a uh, 12 megapixel, 12 and 20 megapixel dual camera, 20 megapixel selfie camera. Man, the selfie cameras are regularly up there like 20 megapixels. Remember when they were like yeah. six? 
Yeah, yeah like anyway. five at the most yeah, at one time. Right? Yeah, there was just real. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, it's got USB-C, 3,000 milliamp battery, up to 128 gig of storage, up to 6 gig of RAM. And it's priced at about between 249 and 349 euros. What? Uh, which is not, yeah, right? Not a, not a, not that. But listen, it, do, it doesn't stop there. The Xiaomi Mi A2 Lite is a 5.84 inch 19 to 9 aspect ratio 1080p LCD display running Snapdragon 625 12 and 15 megapixel uh, dual cameras so a little less 5 megapixel selfie camera there's your 5 megapixel selfie camera but with a bigger battery 4000 milliamp micro USB up to 64 gig of storage and up to 4 gig of RAM so this is a light version despite micro the USB. bigger battery and it runs uh yeah micro USB is an odd choice Come on. it runs it's uh, going to be available for 179 to 229 euros, first in Spain and then out to 40 different countries. So Spain, if you're watching, you're get on board the Xiaomi. On delay. On delay. On delay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what what do we think of these phones? Do you think these these are these are worth it or the price they point seems pixely. right? Yeah, I mean yeah. these are definitely low to it's low Xiaomi. mid, I'd say, and uh, yeah, mid to low. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Uh, I would love to play around with these. I would love to find a contact with Xiaomi because I feel like we talk about their phones all the time, but it's it's yeah. hard to you know without the the day to day use or the day to day experience. Uh, you do have the notch, and I can't tell is the notch on the light or is that on the larger version? I can't quite tell from this article. You don't see it in this picture, but you do see it if you scroll down a little bit. There you go. You got a little notch action there. I wouldn't well, care either way. Little, yeah, I mean, notch, notch, notch doesn't action. bother me, but uh, okay. You know, but some look, at that, that. look at that! Look at that iPhoney back there with the uh, the two cameras stacked on top of one another. Yeah. Well, I guess you can either go vertical or horizontal. Is it? But it, okay, so you're you're a camera person, and you, you you work with these things. Maybe maybe you know the answer you to this. You touch these things. You yeah. work with these things. <laughs> <laughs> you work with these these antiquated things called cameras. I guess my, my question is like between vertical and horizontal uh, layout on dual cameras, like mm -hmm. what, what is the difference? Like, does it actually make a difference in how these cameras, you know, put together the images in the way that they do? No, not at all. The only difference is whether your pinky is going to end up in the frame. Oh, that's a good point. That's it. Yeah. That's a good thing to consider, actually. It is because we're seeing a lot of phones where the, the cameras, those things that some people call uh -huh. cameras are like right <laughs> above the fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone. And so, so often you're mm -hmm. searching for the fingerprint sensor and instead oh, you're are covering you up the Samsung thing. Phones? What's that? Are you talking about some of Samsung's phones? I'm also talking about the Sam, the Sony Xperia ZX2, XZ2, XZ2, uh, that I, that I've been playing. Again, we with. talk a lot about Sony on this show for not a lot of, it's not a lot of Sony out there. Well, well, I don't know that we do Advanced. talk about Sony a whole no, lot. I know. Just the last what, two weeks. What always yeah. gets me about the Sony devices is th they're one of the companies that make the some of the best image sensors yes. out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yet when it comes to their phones, the, the camera is always sort of lacking from a processing standpoint. It looks good, but it takes forever to snap a photo. You know? I have noticed that. That's so interesting <laughs> that you mentioned that because I've been taking a lot of pictures with the uh, with the XZ2, and yeah, there's a little bit of a lag factor with that. That that phone is very interesting in a number of ways, but in some other ways, very puzzling to me, especially for the price point. And I'm sure we'll talk about it more in an upcoming episode. But I really want to give it some time before I really dive dive in on that. But yeah, that's one thing I totally noticed. And uh, let's see here. Google's Chromecast. Hey, happy birthday. We should break out some party hats because Chromecast is five years old. Just turn five. I, I still use Here's, this one. I still he, use he, it. I don't. I, I think I still have that one. I don't know where it is. Here's the thing. Still it feels one. much longer than five years. Yeah. It's yeah. Gonna, it's for come sure. A long way in five years. I remember, still have it. Uh, it's be, this whole experiment began with the Nexus Q. Oh, we remember the Nexus Q. Actually, I don't the know if it Q, began with the Nexus wow. Q. If was the Nexus Q or Google TV first? I think maybe Google TV was first. Yes. TV was first. Yeah. But then Nexus Q came out, and a lot of what we ended up seeing in Chromecast began in the Nexus Q, even though most people never saw the Nexus Q. It never made it consumer to consumer shelves. Uh, Chromecast was a surprise in 2013. In 2014, Play Services expanded uh, 
apps uh, in phones reach into Chromecast, so it made that a lot easier. That was only four years ago. That was only four years what? ago. Oh, I know. Going to go back in time. Later. It's so uh, funny that this. Oh, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. No, I was just going to say they released the puck. They released Chromecast audio uh, supported on Android TV. So now it's baked into Android TV. Then Chromecast Ultra with 4K and HDR. And uh, now a lot of these features come through Google Home as well, right? Like uh, Google Home replaced Chromecast audio for me, what I was using Chromecast audio for. Now Google Home plays the music in all the rooms, which is what I was using it for. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's come a long way. But sorry, I, I didn't mean to uh, cut you off. Ann. What were you going to say? It's just funny that this article pops up in the whole anniversary and whatnot, because Queen Pruitt just yesterday was saying to me, hey, I used the Chromecast all by myself and I got it to work and it, I was able to watch this and watch that. And I said, you know what? That's great. Um, Google is elated because that's what it was for. It's for the people that are not as technical, allegedly, mm -hmm. yeah. to be able to just pick up their phone and, and say cast and let me see it on my bigger screen, you know, and it, it took five years for it to happen, but it's, it's happened. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, <laughs> Chromecast. I had an extra Chromecast. And when I went to visit my parents uh, a couple of years ago in Boise, I installed a Chromecast onto their TV. And that's like the ultimate test for me is if I can install something yeah. on my parents' TV and then leave because I live in the Bay area and right. if they end up using it or if they have any questions or issues, my mom didn't have a problem with it. Like it, she was able to use it regularly and I think they still use it. That's how they watch Netflix. That must be nice. I bought my parents one and they replaced it with a fire TV stick. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, they don't yeah. have YouTube. Like, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, I bet they're really missing YouTube. Your parents they do really actually missing because out. no, they do because they have Romanian pop playlists that oh, they love okay. and like right. it's like the easiest way to get all that stuff. Well, you can still help them out and No. Get them. No, no, I guess I bought them a Chromecast and they did nothing with it. I used money on a Chromecast. <laughs> wow, wow, but I'm still using my performance first gen. issues. Yeah, I remember having performance issues years ago when we first got it and it just slowly got better over time. And yeah, I, agree. I also remember how it, it used to get really, really hot on the back of your television and yep. people were chatting about it in the forums and complaining, but I haven't seen anything about that of, of late. But then again, is it? You just plug it in and it just works. I hardly ever use it. My my family uses it a lot more than I do, and it's just really neat to see that people can just pick it up and do what they want to do and yep. watch it without without having to ask me fifty questions. Hopefully, you know? it just works. <laughs> That's the key. Not getting <laughs> yes. the questions. I mean, they they definitely solve the heat problem where Amazon has not. I got a Fire Stick for my sister, and they re regularly have to unplug it, let it sit for a couple of minutes, and plug it back in because that thing overheats all the time. And blow it in the yeah. cartridge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have to say one little feature that's currently missing from all this casting is the ability to have the TV playing audio and then have the audio stream through the Google Homes throughout the house so I can hear the TV in the other room. Wait a minute, so the Chromecast on the TV is playing video and then all of your Google Homes are playing the audio from That's the Chromecast? That's what I want. Oh, to have I hadn't happen. even thought of that. That's what I want that to have be happen. Great. Because ah. yes. Yes, I want to be able to like cast a home group. Then you can like you, you have to go upstairs uh, to get something. You yes, don't have I to interrupt your house. I want to know what the dialogue lives. is. Yes. Yeah. I need to know what the pettiness is, is unfolding on screen because <laughs> I'm not going to pause the housewives. I just want them to continue. I don't have to see. Or if them. I get up to go get ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> I need to make or sure I know what's going if you're on. You're watching yeah. a game or something. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it is. True. I mean, yeah. it is a game of that's... very dramatic women who have a lot of money. <laughs> Everybody has a different definition of a game. I, yeah, yeah uh, life. That's, that would be a good feature. I like it. it uh, maybe that would be a feature of Samsung's upcoming smart home uh, thing. I mean, who knows? <laughs> it's got Bixby and we don't really hear a lot about it. So here's the thing. <sighs> It's very possible that Samsung could launch a $300 Bixby speaker oh. uh, at its event coming up. So, you know, we've got like all this, all this talk about, ah, there's a note, another note coming. It's another phone with a pen. But what would be so great to have alongside your phone with a pen? Well, what about a speaker that you could also speak to? Um, oh, okay. That is not from that Google or Amazon <laughs> or Apple for that matter. Yeah. So apparently it's right oh, around no. the corner, August 9th. A Bixby Home smart speaker, uh, $300, as we mentioned, par marketed as a premium speaker with 
quote unquote smart features as the extras uh, kind of the idea is also that it might act as a hub for Samsung smart things, which would be super smart because the speakers that exist now are not actual bona fide hubs. Okay. Yeah. And so if they uh, would make it a Samsung smart things hub, that means that they would pump in that hardware that you need to use all that proprietary, to use that particular, mm -hmm. to use that stuff, Zigbee, mm -hmm. Z-Wave and all that. So, which would be kind of an edge on uh, what Google and Apple have going on. Actually, Apple has a uh, HomeKit compatibility in its Apple TV and yep. Amazon has some Zigbee compatibility in some of its smart speakers. So this is kind of the way we're going, we're going here. That way. Going and that it makes sense that Samsung would leverage that because smart things is such like, it's one of the best smart home platforms because it's one of the most elaborate. So, cool. something to keep in mind. It's very much a possibility. Uh, also, a Galaxy smartwatch, and this one has definitely been popping up in my Google feed a lot. So, Samsung actually added a listing for the new Galaxy watch on its site before removing it, and that's what was popping up all over my Google that. feed. <laughs> There's no word if it's running Tizen, uh, like the Gear watches, or if it's running your very traditional Wear OS backslash Android Wear. But Tizen watches are all gear, like I said, so it's very possible that this could be also another gear watch. Evleaks also has fresh renders of the three color fresh. variants of the Note 9. So along with that event, we're thinking maybe there's a watch, maybe there's a smart speaker, and maybe there's three different color variants of the Note 9. So it would include black, blue, and brown. Brown. Which doesn't Kinda really look like brown. Gold. It looks like a mauvish yeah. um, <laughs> of sorts, but you know. Yeah. So. Ay, ay, ay. I'm too old for this stuff, I guess, man. Just give me a black phone or a white phone. That's a Oh, it. you're too I old for I the like colors. The wow. I like the purple that Samsung's been I like doing. I like the different colors. I like the one plus do reds. Millennial, do you want a millennial pink phone? No, oh, because gosh. that millennial pink is going out of style. It's not. Oh, it's, wow. it's officially on it, the out. so passe. You, you, you know she it's on the know. outs because I'm talking about it. <laughs> yes. See, because you are aware, <laughs> that means yeah. it's done. Uh, and admittedly, admittedly, I, I found out about it from Disneyland, so... <laughs> they have millennial pink mini I, ears now. I, I found out about it in a box of Crayolas. Millennial There's pink. a millennial oh, pink no, in... I was about to say, <laughs> Crayola, get with the program. Um, the S Pen, by the way, in that in those pictures, because we talked last week, I think it was last about week. About being yellow. Week, about the yellow, the screaming yellow S Pen. And it appears that it's it's matched to whatever the graphic, you know, the graphic backsplash is on the display as opposed to the actual color of the device. Oh, or maybe okay. that's just the case right. with the yellow one. I guess I guess the yellow S Pen does have a blue tip when it's matched with the blue phone. That makes sense because it's part of the design when you put it into the, the thing. Either way, we're not going to find out until August 9th. And uh, I mean, if you would like, you can come join Jason and I on August 9th yeah. at 8 a.m. here on the Twit Network. That's because right. we're going to be live punditing the Samsung event. We're going to do our own little riff tracks, our own little mystery yep. science theater, except you'll see our faces. We're not going to just be shadows. Although it would be <laughs> awesome if we were shadows. Yeah, sitting you see in our front faces of the enough. thing. That would be fun. <laughs> Uh, maybe we can make that happen. Yes, let's see what we can concoct. Give it a little twist. <laughs> it's not the stream to tune into if you want to hear 100% of the stuff that's happening on the stage. No. It's the stream you tune into if you want to hear 50% of it, maybe. Or 40%. It's commentary. It. <laughs> we commentary. talk over them yes, while they talk do. about their things. I do. I do feel bad. The events that I've been on with you, Jason, and with Leo, like oftentimes, like it goes, it goes quiet for a couple of minutes because we're all listening, yeah. and it's like, and I'm like, oh, I should be talking, but oh, no, I want to hear what they're saying. Yeah, like, I know. It's it's a it's a difficult <laughs> challenge yeah. to, to you gotta, do. You gotta, you gotta find the moment to talk when it's when it's not <laughs> over something that they're talking about that's important. And so definitely it, don't choose to take the ad break right when they announce the price of the device, like I did. Exactly. Don't do that. Above all else, do not do that. The bad that time bad. for the ad break. Yeah. Oh, I'll never live that down. And I think it's just me that applies that pressure on myself. But anyways, uh, hey, we've got a couple of apps news stories to talk about. Let's do that. All right. Did, did, do we know if Sundar showed up or is Sundar still, uh, still offline? Is he still offline? 
Either he's, way, he's offline. Yeah, sorry. If Sundar was here. He would want to tell us, like he told everyone during Alphabet's earnings call, that Google Translate translates 143 billion words every day. What? Which is insane. That's insane. Um, and he also said that there was. We also found out that there was tons of usage during the World Cup in Russia, which makes perfect sense because people from all the countries in the World Cup went to Russia to watch their teams play, and of course they need to translate because who knows Russian? Not a not an Argentinian. They need the tra Google Translate. Yeah. Um, so Sundar Pichai is there bragging about the number of words that they translate and what does the street do and what does people like Business Insider say? But they're like, you know, with that many words being translated, they should be monetizing that. I got to tell you, the curse of this whole industry is, mo is how, how do you monetize it? But um, and well, so a lot of money. speculation now, do, you know, are you going to uh, be able to, are, is Google going to run ads against translations or do some way to, some way to mon uh, monetize it? I don't know. There's something about a great service that uses their machine learning that just works. Yeah. And Google gets their value out of you being a Google customer and getting advertising in other places that I really like. Um, I don't know. Do you guys think they should monetize the Translate app or what? I, I don't think they should. I wonder if at a certain point they go, you know well, actually coming, it makes though. a lot of sense. But, but you're right. Actually, Ron, I think you make a really great point, right? Google doesn't have to make ad revenue on every single product that it creates. A large part of it can be just the fact that it's offering a service that keeps you locked into their e ecosystem, uh, much yep. to the chagrin of the EU. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there, there's value to be gained there too, because then in the places where it is appropriate and it does make sense, they then have you there to serve you there's, ads. There's something about a great app that works that I use that doesn't attack me with ads yeah. that makes me want to keep using that company's product. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, but this gets weirder now because uh, apparently Google Translate is predicting the future as well. Uh, so if you type type the word dog, do you, do, uh, Jason, do we want to do this live or I, can I, we? I, I, oh boy, are we? Uh, I, I don't know why I didn't think to do that. I might not even have Translate installed. No, no you don't have, have to translate. do it. So, well, anyway, so if you type dog into Translate 19 times, <laughs> you get biblical responses that refer to the doomsday oh clock and the end of times. But wait, from from what language to what language? Oh boy. Any, uh, oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Let's find out. It doesn't matter. So I don't think it matters. Just type dog 19 times. Four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Here it goes. Type dog 19 times and translate from Maori into English. They probably removed it at this point. I have. Yeah, they, what the, the heck is now? Maori? It's a language. New Zealand. The Maori okay. are the native peoples of New Zealand. Oh, okay. Maori, yeah. If you, oh my gosh, this is crazy. If you type ag, 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 ag from Irish, or some, um, some it gives you more other biblical references. I have to imagine that they've, they've Man. changed this. Yeah. And so you got to wonder who did this. Was it was it employees screwing around Bibs and just make, awesome. making a prank? So or Maori it, to English? So, uh, yeah, Maori to English. Maori to English. And no, it just says, wait, one, two, three, it just says dog, dog, five, dog. six, seven. <laughs> 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah. How many times did you hit backspace to fix the autocorrect? Uh, <laughs> a bunch. That's why it took me a while. <laughs> I have to imagine that they've corrected it at this point. Like, it's such a strange translation. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it goes, What what is one of these? Well, you know, I guess you can just read it. Go, go look it up and read it. <laughs> some, some people might, I guess, get offended if we if we read some of this out. But it is very interesting. Like, like you said, like how does this happen? And so much of Google right now is being driven by artificial intelligence that happens behind the scenes and predictive stuff that's happening. Yeah. That a lot of people are are thinking it had something to do with that. Uh, Leo, apparently, uh, Del Poco says in chat, Leo was saying that it might have been natural language parsing algorithms, which is kind of what we're talking about. Um, but it's interesting that, it, I mean, when you read some of these sentences, you're like, oh, that's that's scary stuff. Like, why are you telling me this, robot? This is the kind of stuff that makes you makes you wonder if the robots are coming for us. Can I give you a palate yeah. cleanser? Sure. For that story? Sure. Yes, please. Uh, today I learned, today, after so many years of using Android and using the dictation function, I recently went over to both Romanian and English dictionaries in my Google keyboard, and I found out today that you can dictate in another language. 
You can dictate in both Romanian and English at the same time. Wow. So you can dictate at the same time. How do you, how do you mean? Like, how is that when two like people in the are keyboard. talking to each other? Like in the keyboard app. Oh. Yes, when you're doing dictation. So you can, you can switch between Romanian and English. Oh, neat. Yeah. That's cool. Fascinating. T-I-L. Pal- palate, I learned. Palette cleansed. <laughs> Thank you. Flo. You sounded sad. So I, I, yeah. I'll tell you something I learned today. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you got an email. Read the email. Hey, we got an email. Uh, this is from. <laughs> this is okay. I am a blind Android user on a Pixel 2 XL. My vision isn't entirely gone, however. I'm totally unable to read screens with white or light colored backgrounds, which is why that material theming should probably... uh, That should be an option. Yeah, Yeah. I've been unsuccessful in finding a health tracking app that has a dark theme. Would you be so kind as to cast your app net and see what you can catch? I love this. This is Sincere Thanks, Booch, listening in Missouri. Now, Booch, I wonder if that's your real name or if you're just shouting out to the fact that I am Kombucha's number one fan. Mm. I don't know. Could go both ways at the same time. That's why I I pulled that a little bit in the beginning. Um, Actually, it's the same thing. So thankfully, Jason went fishing for us in the Google Play Store, and he found an app called Gym Run Workout Log and Fitness Tracker. So this has actually got a dark mode going for it. It looks like it has a pretty nice layout going for it too. So it's it doesn't look like one of those, you know, kind of seedy workout apps that might be hanging out in the Play Store. Uh, it's got comfortable lock screen widgets and smartwatch support so you can have all that stuff saved. It's got... Uh, data that it'll analyze your workout data for you. Uh, You can, you know, it's got crazy database. It's got tools like a rest timer, a stopwatch. Let's you log your body data and photos, store personal notes for exercises. So, you know, it's, it's all there. Yeah, and it's I, dark. I, I had not heard of this app before, um, but I did kind of do some searching around to see if there was one. And sure enough, this does offer a dark mode. You do have to pay the, I think it's four ninety nine for the premium version to open up the dark mode option. And I wasn't quite sure when, you know, when saying health tracking app, like that could be a number of things. Um, so I went in the fitness direction as far as that's concerned maybe there maybe you're talking about a different type of health tracking app but this appears to kind of check off the boxes of what of what you were looking for and uh there's a backup of your data and all that kind of stuff as well so uh yeah that is uh called if i were on a different gym run workout log and fitness tracker thank you gym run is one word gym run one word g-y-m-r-u-n and i hope that helps booch thanks for writing in I hope you like kombucha. Yeah. And if you have never had it (laughs) before, you should check it out. Maybe booch siblings. Booch (laughs) likes booch. All right. It's time to jump into the arena and battle. Oh, boy. But it's not violent. It's fun. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay, Victor. We've all had those days. Yeah, it's that kind of day. It's one of them days. We've all been there, Victor. Take it personal. All right. So last week's poll, twit.to slash triple A poll 378 is where you went to place your vote, or so we hope you did. And it turns out that uh, if you look at the The results. The people do not like flow. People like flow. Moment. (laughs) But they knew that she they knew that she phoned it in and they got, you know what, flow, better luck next week. (laughs) <laughs> they kind of like flow. They kind of yeah, like flow. They halfway, midway. Yeah. Uh, moment. That was that was my app. Awesome. Sixty one percent. The camera app Hi, called Jason. Moment. Second place, Florence. But that was not Flo's <laughs> app. That was Ron's app. Second place, twenty nine percent. Show candy rainbow. It, it surprises even me that it didn't get first. But ten percent on Show Candy I'm Rainbow. Not, I'm not surprised. I, I I got I regained faith in the audience that Show. <laughs> <laughs> Rainbow didn't get first, um, but I'm disappointed that Florence didn't get first place. I was really pulling for you, Flo. Um, no, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> it was a terrible app. It's fine. Just be honest. So, it's okay. So we are 29 weeks into the year. We're we're ha- more than halfway through the year, and uh, currently guests are in first place with 82 points. So, Ant, no pressure there, sir, as you represent the guests with 82 points. Um, I've, I'm in second place with 75 points. Flo is in third place with 68 points, and Jason, with that win, is is climbing back up. He's got 61 points, and we're primed for a Jason or Flo run to get back into the into the running here. 
Uh, so any, you guys start it at any time, anytime you're ready. <laughs> just come on, give us some competition here. Just so, any so any this, time. I lost. Oh, Sorry. Flo starts first. Yes. All right, Flo, go first. All right. So I brought a smart home app into the arena today. This is called. Actually, let me turn down the brightness on this because apparently it's super white. Here we go. Back over here. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is called Yeti. And yes, it is spelled like a Yeti. W, uh, y, w. <laughs> w. No, it's Y. Y-E-T-I. Uh, anyway, so this is a very easy to use smart home app. And I kind of like to tell people about this who are new to the world of home automation, kind of don't really want to get mixed up in all the stuff that's out there, but they want to have some convenience in their life anyway. So Yeti is a good one for that. It doesn't support uh, a whole bunch of devices, but it does support all kind of the popular ones. So Philips, Nitatmo, Nest, LifeX, Belkin Wemo, Sonos, Ecobee, Honeywell, TP-Link, Yi Lights. Those are all supported by this app, this app, which is called Yeti. So it works with all these things, right? Which is great. You kind of, you pump them in there. They all set up. It takes a couple of minutes. All you have to do is, is put in your login information for your different cloud accounts and then it syncs up. And all of these work. It's just a very easy, flawless remote for all of the basic smart home devices. So here we've got all the smart bulbs in my house, both the LifeX bulbs and the Philips Hue bulbs. And you can see they're all named exactly what I've named them in other apps. Um, unfortunately, this LifeX one, I did not give it a cool name, but hey, whatever. And and they remember everything that you put on at home. So actually, <laughs> let's see if, uh, okay. Yeah, that did work. Um, so this, this bulb is actually, this is actually a light strip at home that's turning on right now. Uh, or I've got like my bedroom light, which shows that it's Freaking a red light. Right, that's He's not home right yet. So oh, okay. this should be fine. Uh, here we've got a red light. You'll see that it's red. So we know that it's red on in my bedroom. Um, the guest room, we're going to turn on that light. That's just a regular natural light. And I really like the fact that, yes, I will tell you later. <laughs> I really like the fact that you can control all the bulbs at the same time from here. You kind of have this nice little visual aid. I have a lot of natural bulbs in the house. So that's why everything is just kind of boring and white. <laughs> and then uh, everything that hasn't turned on is over there. There's also routines that you can set up. So if you've got a good morning routine that you want to start, you can select the day, select the time. You can go in and select the device, what you want it to do. Maybe you want that living room lamp to turn on in the morning to 90 brightness. I Make like sure that UI downstairs that. is. And that's the thing about this UI, by the way, is that it's just very nice and easy to use for anybody who's new. Uh, I did bring in Stringify to the arena many moons ago, and that's a great robust app and it supports a lot of different ecosystems, but it's just not as easy. It, it's not that like beginner feel to it the way that Yeti has, uh, which is really nice because again, you've got very basic labels on the bottom. You want to go, you know, change. Let's, let's actually do a... Um, do I have, yes, a color light here. So this is a color light. So you can choose the color as you need from here, choose the warmth as you like and the effects. So if you wanted to loop colors or blink um, or perhaps you, uh, I actually haven't tested the magic wand which tips your phone towards the device like using a magic wand to turn it off. Okay, Harry Potter fans out there. Bing. There you go. Okay. You can pretend to turn that off that, that way. So that's nice and easy to set up. Uh, just different routines. You can add a custom one based on location or time as you like. This does do geolocation. There's things like uh, movie mood and party time, of course, which records your music and uses that to pulsate the lights in tandem with everything else. I haven't hooked up any of like the Nest accounts or anything uh, because I actually was using this app for a bulb roundup I did for a client. So that's why this is all set up right now. But you know, if you just want like an easy smart home controller and you've got all the stuff that people have in their house, you know, all the stuff that you can easily buy at Best Buy, at Walmart, and you just want an easy way to control it, this is, this is a good way. And then, you know, create an account, you, you know, lets you ex easily explore devices and different cloud brands. So it's nice and easy. It's an easy app that just went white on me. Thanks. <laughs> there you go. Yeti. It sounds just like the abominable snowman, 
but it's not abominable to use. <laughs> that, that should be the tagline. It's not <laughs> abominable to use. Uh, and it's free. Well, right on. Excellent. I just realized I like while you were throwing that off, the army knife was wrong. So, <laughs> uh, vote. All right. Sorry, I had to do some behind the. You can see I have two computers here because this little Chrome tab doesn't quite That's do what I computer, needed to do. That's not a computer, Jason. You, you, you can't really do everything on the Chrome on the tablet, unfortunately. Not every oh. everything, almost. Not everything, everything. almost everything. All right. All right, am I up? That yep. means I'm up. Go for it. All right. So sometimes you want to watch internet videos, and sometimes you don't want to think about them, and also sometimes you don't really want an algorithm to tell you what you want to watch. You want actual people. So if you're looking to be entertained, to lean back, use your Chromecast that is now five years old, um, you should check out the app that you don't have to think about. It's called Never Think. Aww. And what it is, okay. what, yeah, what it is, is, is a TV app that is curated by people and organizes videos by topic. So um, if you look at the navigation there, as Jason's showing, you see the little video, video player along the top, but then there are all these little cards of different types of videos. So there's, if you wanna learn something, if they're memes, if you wanna laugh, if you scroll down, there's an avocado that says millennial AF. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> if you're if you're into documentaries, you see there's one that's documentaries. You can go to news. So it's a good balance. It's not just all dumb dumb memes of people getting hit in the crotch. It could actually be the latest news reports or interesting information, celebrity news flow. Um, you know, they've got TV and movies, lifestyle. They've got all these really great curated topics, and you just connect it to Chromecast and sit back and just see what their cur what their curation brings, what videos are out there on the internet. I found that I used to do this on YouTube with what was trending or what is popular, and I've, I've, I've increasingly been uh, disappointed by those results. Either they're repetitive or they're not really into it or whatever. Um, I like the idea of this of this being a curated channel and watching uh, whatever is being rolled on. Like is this, this the is ASMR oddly, channel. It's, od <laughs> it's oddly satisfying. It's soap crunching and crushing ASMR. That's oddly satisfying. Um, but uh, yeah, so if, so I don't know. It's cool. It's just it was neat to see uh, to see a different approach to providing video from the internet. Um, you can you can. Yeah. All right, we don't need to do it. Let's not get into the ASMR world. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was getting pulled um, in. I apologize. So if if there's a particular um, if there's a particular uh, card that you like, you can press a little the three dot uh, hamburger menu there, and you can move that to the top. So if that's something that you always like, you can see who is curating it. Um, but you can always do that. If there's a particular video you like, you can favorite it. So you can hit uh, the the heart there up there, and it will come up again. Um, and then you can also on the bottom hit the hearts to see your favorites. And that way, if you want to revisit all your favorites, um, and then in the settings, the interface is really nice in that it lets you um, turn subtitles on or off, adjust the quality, um, as well as backup and sync devices, which is pretty, which is pretty neat. Which is a function I, I often like um, with when you've got favorites and things like that. You don't want to keep your data uh, just on the phone on the app. So never think. Uh, an interesting way to approach internet video if you just want to sit back and watch TV, either on your phone or on Chromecast, free in the Google Play Store. Check it out. I uh, never think that was the TV it. of the internet. <laughs> that is really cool. Yeah, That's an interesting, uh, interesting idea, interesting approach. I love it. All right, that is never think one word. Uh, and you are up next. I have your app installed. I'll show it off while you talk about it. Well, mine will be short and sweet. Um, it is Storm Radar, and put it put it frankly, it is a weather app. But it's a weather app that I I love using. Especially this time of year here in North Carolina, mm. we have our summertime, but it's hum humid and we have a bunch of storms. And for me, with, when it comes to photography, the best time for me to get out and shoot is either right before a storm or right after a storm. And with this app, I can pull it up and look at what's going on in my area and use a little timeline to figure out where's the clouds going to going to be within the next hour, the next 30 minutes or what have you, and try to plan out safely where I need to be to set up my shoot. And I've been working on trying to do some drone shots mm -hmm. to get lightning, and I've been able to get a few here and there just from figuring out what's happening on that map and sending my drone up in the air and hoping it doesn't get shot down and uh, just going to shoot. And it doesn't cost you anything. It's free. There's a few ads, but I never see the ads. But 
if you're a weather weather geek, you probably already know about this app. But again, from a content creation and, and, and photography standpoint, there is no better time. Well, other than golden hour, whether, you know, in the morning yeah. or in the evenings. But if you like shooting landscapes, just go out there and go right before the storm or right after the storm because you're going to get some amazing cloud cover and the light's going to be just right. And that that storm app right there just will help guide you along the way. I feel bad we don't have any weather to show anybody here. It's <laughs> well, the coast always has a little Carolina. bit of... We've had storms. Just swipe on over to North Carolina. Yeah, go to the East Coast. What are you doing over here? You're on the wrong coast. <laughs> <laughs> We've got nothing going on over here except forest fires. North. There you go. North We're, Carolina. There we go. All We've right. had storms all week. And, and it says it tracks tornadoes and hurricanes as well. Yep, yep, yep. And you get all of that beautiful detail. Oh, that, that must be scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a tornado here yesterday. Oh. Uh, right here in my town. No uh, it wasn't too bad. It did sort of just zip through, so it didn't really tear up too much but you know we're used to it it's, this is how the summer goes here it's extremely weathers. hot and humid but then we get random storms like this you know a couple times a week i want to see how hot it was earlier oh uh, okay yeah, well, it's, at least in this area uh not too bad right on this is a well-designed app it looks really nice i like the animation aspect of it and how it the weather channel into the future <laughs> yeah Turns out they know a little something about weather. Just put some jazz on in the background while all this animation <laughs> <laughs> Right on. That is called Storm Radar. Storm Radar. Good pick. Right Super simple. People in chat are excited about that too. And then my app is... What's your app? My app is something for those of you who might have a DTV antenna and you're trying to figure out where these uh, these uh, stations are. You're trying to find an antenna uh, somewhere Ooh, out there that, that carries this the, is, the channel that you're looking for. You need this if you have an antenna. Oh, boy. L living in San Francisco, I remember this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, oh. and uh, I've got the radius kind of out right now. Um, it's it just outside of San Francisco. Um, I guess I could... I'm trying to find remember a San Francisco... Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's <laughs> I've lost all nine four one one one. That is the San Francisco. Wow, I forgot too. There oh, we go. Awful. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So basically, it'll show you in your radius, and I have a. I wish it gave you a numerical value of what your radius is, but it doesn't. I think this is a new app that uh, that came out not too long ago. But you can define your radius, and it'll show you within your radius, which would I I'm assume be the reach of whatever your DTV antenna is that you plan to put on, on your home. Um, define that radius, and it'll show you where these antennas are placed. And in the Bay Area, uh, much of it is placed in the center of San Francisco, which is really great if you live there. Uh, Wait, is that Sutro Tower? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then what we have up here in Petaluma is we have a handful of these. And if I go to the list, kind of shows you what's locally. If I get an antenna very close to me, this is about all I'm going to get on my on my antenna. Wow. Kind of shows oh. you the, the rough direction of where they are compared to your location. And again, you could you set out that PBS. radius to know better. Oh, yeah, I know. Everything. <laughs> At least. I Everything you need is on this PBS. This is pretty slick. Um, and then, and yeah, and I, I imagine that could help in positioning the antenna that you have. Mm -hmm. If you want to get in a particular station stronger yeah. than not, you can kind of see the arrow is pointing that way. It's kind of hard to see uh, if I zoom you know, over the feed, but I can see it's a very tiny arrow pointing in a certain direction. So if I was to use this to kind of try to narrow down the direction where the specific stations antennas are, I could potentially improve my, uh, my reception of that. Uh, I just thought it was a cool kind of visualization of these things, uh, realizing that it's probably not going to help me very much up here in Petaluma. So a, a bunch of, the, I think the NBC antenna is down in San yep, Jose. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So like you're, you're screwed up here. You're screwed. You're not going to get NBC. It's just probably it's okay. not going to happen. <laughs> it's fine. You're not missing much. No, it's true. Yeah. I've lived without <laughs> it for a long time. Uh, but anyways, it's a cool little app, uh, very kind of low installs on this. I think, like I said, I think it's a relatively new app. Helpful utility. Uh, and yeah. I, w I wish I had slick, that when I was though. in San Francisco. I would spend forever trying to position my antenna to get the channels. Yeah, I remember oh. those days. Yeah, yeah. 
one one install, as far as I can tell, on the Play Store. So this is a very new app. Uh, Are so, you the only one who's installed it? Jason's I don't, the beta. I don't. I don't think I'm the only one that installed Jason's it. The alpha. I just don't think their page is updated yet, but it very well could have gone live today or yesterday. Well, enjoy TV Towers, everyone. Yeah. Debut of a new app. That's right. Hey, go show them some love. Yeah, you could be the first on the new wave of apps. Like social media has defined the last 10 years. Maybe the next 10 years will be defined by TV tower apps. <laughs> and you will be in the very beginning. You'll be riding the wave from the beginning with this app. You're welcome. Flo's facial expression was priceless. <laughs> <laughs> Full of doubt, I'm sure. TV towers is the name of the app. All right, and that is that. If you want to place your vote, Ooh. don't go where you normally go because I messed it up. Go to instead twit.to slash triple A vote 379. Twit.to slash triple A vote 379. That's AAA yeah. vote 379. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man, I almost missed that Wait, detail. AAA vote 379? <laughs> yes, AAA vote 379. I get, I get nothing for you to see here. Twit.to slash... Not TV. Yep, twit.to slash AA vote 379. I hate this tablet. <laughs> oh, yeah. It went, it went to an... Um, <laughs> well, fine. <laughs> it's probably going to be well, something else well, then. Jason, well, Jason is setting up that uh, twit.to slash AA vote 379. This is a good time to let you know to stay <laughs> tuned to the bonus footage at the end of the show to watch us eat these thin Oreos with green fillings. What flavor is it? Who knows? Mm. Stay tuned to the end of the show. You'll find out. The Oreo tastings are going to end soon, people. Let's enjoy them while they last. Before they become <laughs> pistachios. Before oh, they oh. become uh, parfaits. Okay, Pop -tarts. I think I might be there. Pineapple. All right, now it works. Twit.to slash triple A vote 379. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. I love uh, the vamp. Yeah, I appreciate it. Wait, we didn't Fair. get to see who Victor is voting for. Maybe we still get to? Who are you voting for, Victor? What's the big idea here? Never think. Victor Never wants, think. Victor wants uh, engaging content to help <laughs> distract him from the perils of this world. Let's but let's be real. That app looked really engaging. It had, it had a lot of fun stuff on it. Is, and blinky is there colors. still a button if you want to see people um, getting hurt? What? Fail TV. Yeah. Oh, no. Is that, is that one of them? Is, I was going to say crotch shots, but not, I mean. Is is that one of the uh, one of the, seg the sections? Probably. Probably. There's always, there's always a fail TV. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm seeing it yet. It might fall into some of these other ones. YOLO. Maybe. YOLO. Oh, that could, that could be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You lost my vote with that one. I, I bet it's in here somewhere. Oh, there you got me. Fail TV. Should be. All right. We're done with that. And I think we're done with this show. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Pruitt, <laughs> techrepublic.com, and so many other things. And thank you so much for hopping on tonight. This is a lot of fun. We love having you on. Uh, it's my pleasure. I appreciate you guys having me on. Absolutely, man. We have a lot of fun when you're on. Um, tell people mm -hmm. where you want them to find you all over the internet. Uh, sure. Hop on over to techrepublic.com. Um, I appreciate them giving me a space to to create and publish my findings and, and musings and whatnot. But uh, also head on over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ant Pruitt and uh, Instagram. Just uh, search for Ant Pruitt. I'm the only one out there. Right on. That's got to be nice. <laughs> it it makes like securing URLs and usernames oh, and all wow. that stuff so much easier when clouds. you have a name that no one else has. Yeah, that's awesome. See, you go right after the storm. Is this a time lapse? Get... Yeah, that's a, a hyperlapse with the drone. Wow. That is awesome. <laughs> right on. Good stuff, man. That's why you want weather because you. you get gorgeous clouds like that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know. There's a lot of detail in those clouds. Uh, and thanks again. We'll uh, We'll have you back soon. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Ron, what's up uh, What's up in your world? Uh, not much up in my world. You can go to Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash ronxo and Instagram at ronxo on there. Follow me there. I'm going to be, as I mentioned, on vacation this week. I'm going to be at Pittsburgh playing in the world's largest pinball tournament. So what? more than likely, there'll be some photos on Instagram of pinball machines. So if you're interested in that, follow me there. So there you go. 
Um, been a quiet week because I've been busy with work and life and things like that. In fact, I was exhausted. Um, but um, <laughs> but yeah, but follow me and and fun stuff happens there. So there right you go, on, man. Cool. Yep. Best of luck at at the pinball tournament. Thank you. Yes, Pinburg. Yeah. I leave tomorrow. That sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Flo? What about me? Well, you might be knowing, you might be knowing, you might be knowing that I'm doing this little show called Know How with Megan Maroney. That's it's right. I know that. Watch. It's here on the Twit Network. And this week we'll be covering smart assistants. So tune in and watch Megan and I wrestle a bunch of digital assistants because that alone is entertainment. <laughs> oh, that's going to be gold. Uh, it's it's going to be very interesting because we recorded it last week on Amazon Prime Day. So you can imagine oh it was not easy. And <laughs> Megan's the one with the Amazon products. So. The IoT gods were not smiling upon you that day. Yeah, we had to do a lot of hugging afterwards. It was really, <laughs> it was a difficult time. Well, and just to let you know, Josh is editing that with his speakers on right next to me on the cubicle right next to me, so, so it's firing off. He's, at, he's firing it's just, off it's everything just else. Megan and Flo just cursing, just, rrr, rrr, just grumble. <laughs> well, it's gonna be. It's not gonna be rough devices. once the edits. No, done. you're not gonna even tell. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be really good because I kept forcing <laughs> Megan to to take the shot over and over again so we could get it. Uh, uh, but that's the kind of fun we do on Know How. So please tune in. Uh, please tune in, and we've got more stuff coming up, including security systems soon. Nice. Uh, and if you're curious on reading about security systems now, all my security system reviews are up at Tom's Guide. So Fantastic. you can go over there and check cool. those out. Oh, that's a spooky shot. Flo's been, bu Flo's been busy, y'all. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. One of these days you'll this be able good, to have though. the chance to calm down a little bit. It's I'm it's bad. good. Freelancing is busy and then yeah. and then busy and then what am I doing with my life? And then yeah. busy <laughs> and then <laughs> each peak and valley makes you appreciate the other thing. Precisely. <laughs> Basically. Precisely. Uh Victor, thank you for everything. And I promise you next week will be better. Uh for what it's worth, I found a Sundar, but Oh hey Sundar! I, I know you don't uh <laughs> He, oh, there we go. go. We should just always have you on speed dial, Sundar. Yeah, Don't ever leave should. us again. Hey, Sundar, how many words are translated by Google Translate per day? Uh, A lot. 143 <laughs> billion. Oh, thanks. Thanks for answering that question in Ron voice, Sundar. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> really nice of you. Uh, thanks again, Victor. And thanks to Harry from Fort Lauderdale. He's sitting in here uh, watching us live in the studio. We're super thrilled to have him here. It makes us feel special to have people watching live in the it studio. It really does, especially because we're a late nighter and people don't always yeah. like to stay for us, which. Yeah, you know. You know. It's it's it. it, it, it it goes into that dinner time, that valuable dinner time. Uh, so I'm sure, I'm sure you're hungry. Your Leave you your go families. Get be some with dinner us. Here in a second. We're all uh, the family you need. But before we let you get your food, we need to tell you a few other things. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm here on Twit and yellowgoldmusic.com, but that's not important. What is important is going to this show's show page at twit.tv slash AAA, because that's where you can subscribe to it and find all of the information uh, that we have for this show. Past episodes, uh, the, the times that we record, which would be Tuesday, uh, every every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. You can find that there. You can find screenshots of last week's episode, as well as the title and the album art. So many things. And that links out to the rest of the Twit site, where you can find the same information for all of our, our other shows. If you want to leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us emails, AAA at twit.tv. Find us on Twitter at Android Show. Arena Apps list can be found at twit.to slash Android Apps. And I think we covered everything else. So it's just time to say goodbye for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. Bye. Ant, I did not prepare you for this, and I'm sorry. It's all good. I, I'm, I like I'm glad to be a part of it one way or another. <laughs> you can live vicariously through us. Somewhat. Uh, you can, you can be... If you like them. Through, through the power of the internet, you can be as sick of Oreos as we are after almost a year <laughs> of tasting them every single week. Um, Ron, you're probably less sick of them than Flo and I because you've tasted some of them, but this week you're going to taste but along with us. I've watched a lot of them, so I wouldn't say I'm totally not sick of them. But I'm happy because I get to participate this week. Good work. Thank, uh, why don't you introduce Amazon. it? What 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 is it? 
So in honor of the upcoming Android P, which is yet to be named but is widely rumored to be a specific P word, we are going to be diving into Oreo Thins pistachio flavored. Pistachio so cream. Pistachio cream flavored Oreos. Um, and as the box says, always made with real cocoa. Okay. And uh, pistachio cream artificially flavored, only 140 calories per four cookies. So that's good to know as well, too. So okay. thin Oreos flavored pistachio, maybe as foreshadowing of the future version of Android. Yeah, I was going to say, way to play with our emotions. Wow, those are green. Yeah, they are. Not the, not the only green Oreos that exist in the world. The mint Oreos are also green. That, yeah, that's they do These not are like smell, a lighter green, though. They, they do not smell as overpowering as the strawberry shortcake right, uh, good humor ones did. Mm, but they are green. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to have to ding like at a point. That didn't Here's work. A, uh, that's, I, mean, I blame that on the thin. I was going to say, how, how, do we feel, how do we feel about the thin? Well, I like the thins. They make me feel, I mean, honestly, less guilty. Yeah, and I think that's what they're designed to do. I think initially I was resistant that's because, you know, uh, you know, the tradition would say that a thin is just like uh, the anti-Oreo. But over time, said. like I've Live actually the kind of, they're, they're okay. Okay. I think actually over the time that we've eaten so many Oreos and I'm kind of sick of them, now I'm like, cool, thin. This is great. Less to eat. All right. So pistachio Oreo thins. Let's take a bite. Mm. Mm. Okay. Ooh. I'm searching for a defined flavor right now. Well, no, here's the thing. At first I was like, this just tastes like a regular Oreo. Oh. But then, like one or two, did you get it? You got yeah. like one or two bites in. All of a sudden, this pest pistachio flavor ignites in your mouth. <laughs> and I love pistachio ice cream and <laughs> pistachio gelato, so I'm actually a fan of the pistachio flavor. And I have to say, these do whet my appetite. Do they? Uh huh. I'm confused. It's a confusing flavor. <laughs> it's a confusing I flavor. I just had a second me. one. Wow. I'm gonna say I'm going in for number two. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was yummy. I don't know the flavor. The flavor is confusing to me. It's like they're two opposing forces, the chocolate and the pistachio. I need to go pistachio. get my kombucha. All right, see you later. But I like that. I like I'm that. I'm glad I have whiskey because pistachio oh, is not Oh, that's <laughs> – Android W is going to be great. Let's just say that because <laughs> every, every week we'll drink a, a snifter of whiskey. All right, little hand, yes. you can take it. Uh, make sure I specifically and share that, brought that coffee around. kombucha to have with the Oreos today, so that's why I'm oh. like – I need to. Is that generally a good combination, Oreos and kombucha? Yeah, this is Revive Kombucha. It's one of my okay. one of my new fave brands. It is uh, brewed in Sonoma County, right here in Sonoma okay. County. Okay. Um, in Petaluma, right here in Petaluma. This wow. is Petaluma That's made local. Booch. Local flavor. Nice. Support local. That's what's uh, up. I'm as as familiar as I am with Oreos. I am equally unfamiliar with kombucha. It's just carbonated beverage. Oh, okay. And whatever flavor is on the, and then sometimes it has so like soda. gross little bacteria in it. Yeah, that's that's, that's good for your belly. Yeah, exactly. And it's just it. It's okay. Really helps flow. All into right. Into our thirties. Okay. Well, let's not let's. We're not rating kombucha. We're rating Oreos. So that's let's, true. Let's, that's true. Let's do that. <laughs> All right. So uh, what do you think, Ron? I'm gonna give it a seven. Really? And it's a, yes, and because I'm not down with the thin. If this was a full pistachio, it would be a solid I'm eight, eight and a half. But I'm giving a seven because I don't. I'm not. I I, I want this in full Oreo splendor. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Flo, you you're you're a pistachio fan. Yeah. Okay. I'd give it like, I'd give it like an eight. Like I would buy these and bring them home and eat them at my house. Mm, okay, so you would actually buy them. That, that, I think that I qualifies really like as a pistachio flavor. Above, yeah. I really like pistachio flavor, and with chocolate, that's just my two favorite things: pistachios and chocolate. But I just don't think those two flavors work together. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead. Like, mm -hmm. would I buy these and bring them that's home? I wouldn't. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a five and a half. That's unfortunate. I used to make a pistachio mix. Wow. I would get the shelled pistachio and mix it in with like uh, chocolate chips. Okay, and that would be like my little. Hmm. That's, Indulgence. I've just never considered like pistachio and chocolate to be uh, complementary flavors, I guess. I don't know. Or have I? Have I ever had like a pistachio? You know, I find people have very interesting with relationships with nuts. 
Yeah. Like, not everybody has yeah. a similar relationship with nuts. It's true. And of and of, of all the nuts out there, pistachio is definitely not on my list of, like, I got to have. Yeah, I grew up eating you know, the costco right. size bag of pistachios. Like, it was a family, like, experience. Everyone shelling their own pistachios, wow. tossing them into a communal bowl. It's like a pistachio party. It was. Queen In fact, Pruitt's pistachio the same party. <laughs> Queen Pruitt's the same way? Oh, yeah. Loves pistachios. pistachios all the time. Okay. I have, yeah, every day after work, I open a bag of sweet chili pistachios and I get to crack in. Scooter X likes pistachio Oreo thins. The get thins part good. didn't bother me. It was just the combination of flavors. Well, that's okay. What? It's your first time. Oh, and Burke, Burke gives it a very big little hand thumb up. So A very big little hand thumb up. I like <laughs> yes. that. Big. Little yeah, we've well got a whole row left over here, so... Oh, good. Uh, well played, I'm going sir. straight into my mouth after yes. the show. And... All right.